Minnesota Street Route Association. We're doing a safety team uh, video coming right up here, and we're going to start on a on a car. We're going to safety from the top to the bottom. Okay, this is a form that has to be filled out for a safety inspection on a vehicle. We'll give this to the owner and have him fill it out and sign it down on the second line. Huh. All right, I need you to fill this inspection sheet out. It's good for for from June to June for the next year. You want the whole thing filled out on there? Yes. Everything? Do I sign any place? Well, you don't do any of the checks. Oh, okay. You just sign it on the second line and fill out the top. Okay, thank you.
remember to check the emergency brake valve. One thing you want to remember when you're doing a neutral safety start or anything in a run motion, be sure don't get caught between the door and the uh, open door. If you have a suicide door, you have the door shut or be behind it. Uh, conventional door like on this, be sure you're standing behind the door so if the car does move, you will get caught with the door. Uh, the next thing we're going to check, turn the key on, but don't start it. We're going to check play for steering. I'm looking for about a two inch deflection anymore. Really question it. This one is nice and tight. So there's no excessive play on the top side. Now we're going to have to have them open up. The hood, check uh, throttle linkage, fuel system, the exhaust system. We heard it running out the back. It sounds like there was an engage, so we'll do a visual check on that. Then uh, we'll go check the self aligning rod in bearings, shock absorbers, brakes, and the scrub line. <laughs> and starts looking at it. You know, while we're looking at the car, we're going to look for seat belts fire extinguisher inside the car. And also, one other thing we'll do is we'll check the travel on the brake pedal and see if we can feel where if there's loose play in the The reason I check the travel on the brake pedal you, you don't want a solid pedal right away. You want some play in it so that your brake system, when it gets hot, it doesn't expand and cause the brakes to drag overheat and wear it out. You want some play in the brake pedal before it engages the masters. Can get back in the car, Don? Yes, sir. Yeah, now. Next thing we're going to check is throttle linkage to make sure that it doesn't go over center, that uh, it returns, it's got a return spring on it. Actually, it has two return springs on it. Go ahead and step it down to the floor once, Don. Okay. Once he stepped it down to the floor, you go ahead, put pressure on the linkage, go ahead and release the gas pedal, you hold it, take your finger off, if it returns, then you know you've got a system that's working. The other thing is when you're holding it over, if it's not right, it'll go over center, and we don't want that situation because then the car will run away from you. It's wide open. Uh, next thing we'll look at is the fuel system. We'll look at how the fuel line is routed to the carburetor. This one's done with a rubber hose. So we got to look closely at the rubber hose. It's got a fuel filter that's close to the top of the manifold. Uh, those are things I kind of hate to see. I'd rather see a fuel filter down into the main line coming up to the fuel pump reason for that, this is a good fuel filter, this is a solid one, but some of them are screwed together and we've seen those unscrew and burn a motor now. Uh, as for the hose, I like to see hard line because then it won't vibrate and rub on something. The hose is laying against the uh, water pump on this side, right. down, down on the bottom, and it's not anchored at all, there's no, no anchor straps on the the hose at all to keep it in place. It's not a failure, but it should be written up and the owner should be notified about it and have him take a look about fixing it or changing the way he's got it done. At least talk to him about it. It's not one of those things that is really unsafe, but it's something where you'd like to see a solid line because it could be just a little bit safer. Check out the throttle linkage. Fuel systems. We'll look more on the fuel systems on this open chassis we've got next to this car. Line to the 
like to see on the car. The fuel line, I should say, on the car. Uh, it's bent out of tube. It's mounted. It's secure. It doesn't rub, and it doesn't. You have a better chance of it not breaking. Uh, rubber hoses seem to get warm after a while, and, and they chafe and break, and you have a fire problem. It also goes into the fuel pump. We have a rubber hose coming out of the fuel pump, and the line runs back along the frame, back to the gas tank, which is mounted with straps to the frame. Now the reason you do want a rubber hose from your fuel pump to the line on the chassis is to take up vibration from the motor. So you do want some fuel line into your car. This will run back and like we said we like to use a fuel filter. We put it right on the tank, almost on the tank, and the biggest filter you can put in the line. I hate to give an endorsement, but I've used those kind of filters for about 60,000 miles and they're bulletproof. Never had a gas problem. And I buy gas every place. This is the ventilation hose for the uh, gas tank. This will run over, either can run over the side of the tank and be mounted to your frame someplace. Uh, some guys will run it up into the, the fill tube, have a vented cap uh, with a fill tube and have a a tube coming out of the top like, like your new cars do and run it back into the into the tank. This here is just a, uh, a fancy cap we put on here just to plug it until the car is done to keep the dirt off. So this is not the, the regular fill tube that will be on here. Okay, we're going to do the exhaust system. What we're looking at is to see that the exhaust system runs either behind the, the front doors or all the way out the back of the car. Uh, no leaks, and it exits the exhaust away from the, the vehicle. Following this exhaust to the end, and it's going to come out past the gas tank and down here past the frame. It just kind of dumps right out there, kind of neat looking. At it from the bottom. Okay, the other thing to remember is looking at the exhaust system is we're looking at it from the top, but you'd be looking at it from the bottom. If you want to use a mirror, flashlight, anything to, to help you look under the car, it would really be handy. Is this out? This is a uh, basic front end on a, well, probably a Deuce or a Model A, straight axle front end with a four bar setup. Uh, one thing you have to look for and the thing we find most is the jam nuts are loose. We want to check on all four bars to make sure the jam nuts are tight. Make sure they have washers that are as big or bigger than the bushings that are on the rod ends so they do not pull through. Um, also, uh, let me turn this around for you. Make sure the bolt comes through. Uh, this has a nylock on it. Make sure the bolt comes through the nylock at least one or two threads because uh, the nylock is at the end of the nut and it will not hold if it does not have a threat coming through. Uh, other than that, I'm not the best on four bars, but this is things we look for. Um, washers, jam nuts. Anything else, Joel? Your shock absorber, your bracket, your shackles, they'll have nylocks on them too, and a thread, at least a thread showing through them. Uh, this is a barrel bolt. I guess not. It's just, just it's a different kind of a bolt, but it, it's, it's one of those for a front end. It's got a nylock on it. Uh, it would be a spring that went up over the top. When looking for it on the front end, uh, the first thing I look for is I check the jam nuts on the tie rod ends, make sure that they are tight. Check your shocks for leaks, uh, see if there's any oil leaking out of them. Check your rubbers for your, your sway bar, the rubber cups for the uh, ball joints, see if they're torn or not. Uh, check your mounting of your, of your sway bar up in front. Check to see if you've got the uh, cotter keys. Yep. Check your cotter keys top and bottom. Uh, Check your brake line hoses, make sure that they're clear, not touching anything. Um, if you like to take the wheel, have your, the owner of the car rock the steering wheel, check
check for play in the in the tie rod end. Also check for the rubbers on the rack, make sure that they're in good shape, that the rack is not moving around. And then you can also check the, the steering joints up on top here. Uh, these do wear out, it doesn't matter who makes them, they do wear out after a while. Uh, we found a lot of cars with worn pegs in the in the U-joints. That's basically your front end. Are required to have four shocks in the back to in, in the front. Uh, they can be air shocks or in the back or hydraulic. No leaks. Two inches of travel. Uh, the other thing we're going to look at when you're looking at the shocks, also look at the brake lines, look at the backing plates, see if there's wet spots on the backing plates. Look on the inside of the rims, see if there's a buildup of grease or, or fluids on the inside of the rim. It will be, be just dirty and greasy. If, if there's a buildup in there, you can kind of suspect that it's got a bad wheel bearing or maybe a bad wheel cylinder. Something's leaking back there, put the fluid on the rim, and then the road dirt will build up on that and give you a clue that there's something wrong. Also, check your brake hose on your rear end, make sure that that is clear from the exhaust or from being crimped uh, in the travel of the rear end. Make sure that your brake lines are in it, set up so they do not get crimped by the movement of the rear end. Check. Your brake line where it passes under the exhaust pipes, because if there's a clearance problem, it's going to flatten that brake line out. Uh, you want to check the brake lines to see that they're mounted solidly on the chassis so they don't move up and down. You can do that with a mirror. Just when you're under the car, just run the mirror down the rail. You can look up and you'll see the line or you can reach up there and feel it. Uh, usually when I'm inspecting a car, I will look at the other rail from this side, feel this rail, go over to the other side, feel that rail, and look at this one. You have to have a flashlight with a pretty good battery in the wall to be able to get you. Uh, look for any chance of the brake line rubbing on any of the frame pieces. Hopefully there won't be any movement or any clearance problems on it to wear through the brake line. Next we're going to look for is when the owner's in the car, you're going to have them turn the wheels lock to lock. And you're looking for the brake lines to see if they'll banjo. What we mean by banjo is they'll get real tight. We turn this other way around for now. This line still has plenty of play in it, so I'll to move up and down. If it was banjo, it would get really tight. It'd get tight to the point that it would want to tear here or tear down on the caliper down here. That's what you refer to as banjo on the lines. Okay, we're going to do scrub line. Now, no steering, suspension, or chassis component should be below this line. Your oil pan, exhaust, they can be in the way. Or sheet metal from the car. What we're looking at is from the bottom mm -hmm. to the tire on one side, just moves in to the rim on the other side. A quarter inch below the rim. Okay, a quarter inch below the rim. Anything that falls below this line would be in scrub. We have to look at that line from that side, and then we'll look at it from this side. Okay, and that makes an X in here. Anything below that X would be in scrub. We also look at scrub from the bottom of this tire to the top of the rim and back. Anything in the imaginary X there that is below would be in scrub. This chassis has got quite a bit of clearance. There's nothing to worry about. Now looking at some of the newer cars, 
that have air ride suspension in them, you have to look at those and look where scrub is. Also, the bigger the rim on the car, the less chance he's going to have to be in scrub. Also, when you're checking an air ride car, you check the air ride car at ride position. Not down, not high up, but where the ride position is. That's where you're checking it. Okay. In is with a piece of string that's you know if you don't have this other tool special tool with you and the way to do it is just tie a knot in the end of the string come up slide it under the tire pull it towards the back it'll stick on the thread and you can pull it over to a quarter inch down from this side and there's your imaginary scrub line That way you can always carry a scrub line stick with you. All you need is four feet of four feet of twenty. Now we're looking at the scrub line in the rear end. A couple of things that we see a lot of is extra long bolts. So the down the low scrub, and that's what you'll have to tell a guy that you should really do something to get those out of the way. He has a flat tire, the tire goes down, that piece of suspension will catch on the concrete and can spin the car around. Other than that, he's got a nice clean area all the way under that X. Anything else, Kim? No, we won't cut it. <laughs> the completion of the safety inspection, you'll mark approved or not approved. If it's 23, you'll write a 23, circle it on the paper, You'll sign your name and anybody who helped inspect the car. You'll give them a MSRA safety. Well, we'll give them an MSR. Walker Radiator will give them a National Street Rod Association 2310. And the sticker will be installed on the windshield before you walk away. Thank you.